twice slain and thrice born, Mordecai is a brutal warlord from a foregone era, who uses his necromantic sorcery to bind souls into an eternity of confinement. There are few who remember his earlier conquests, or know the true extent of his powers, but some ancient souls do, and they fear the day when he may return to claim dominion over both the living and the dead. He's also got interesting interactions with other champions, so let's start with Swain. Clutch your borrowed power, Grand General. Your soul is already mine. When the cruel Emperor Orum Darkwell ruled Noxus, Darkwell was getting older each day past. He was so afraid as he felt the grasp of mortality in every second. Not wanting to die, he sent the Noxian army to fight wars on too many fronts, just to achieve every magical object that would prolong his life. That greed in his almost killed Swain. He and his army were defeated by Ionian warriors, and Swain was heavily injured. When Swain was waiting to die, a raven perched next to him. Swain felt an old familiar darkness press upon him again. But Swain did not let the raven consume his soul. He looked at the eyes of the demonic raven, saw even the darkness couldn't see, and Swain achieved the demonic power. Now, let's talk about why Mordecai tells that to Swain. Before Swain found the power coincidentally, or not, he didn't have such significance in Runeterra. As Mordecai is the true conqueror of the world, he sees Swain's power as a temporary weapon before the demon consumes Swain or leaves him. Death has no meaning, Karthus. All that matters is one's purpose beyond it. Now, let's remember the story of Karthus. When Karthus was young, he was obsessed with death. He always wanted to learn the meaning of death and what happens when a person dies. After he realized he couldn't get reliable answers from mortals, he took a trip to Shadow Isles. He learned what he wanted, but got cursed by the Black Mist and, with his eagerness, he became the emissary of Shadow Isles. Mordekaiser says that because his strong will prevented him from fading multiple times and he knows what death and life means more than anyone else. So even though he doesn't have any connection with Karthus, there is an interaction. In the world beyond, blackened ichor filled a crumbling sky, as souls withered to nothing, but I refuse to fade. You claim strength, Darius. Prove it. The reason Mordecai got an interaction with Darius is mainly because Darius is from Noxus. And like most Noxians, Darius is obsessed with strength, and he never tolerates defeat. Darius claims he doesn't fear anyone or anything, so Mordecai wants Darius to prove his strength on him. The strong will rise. Pathetic glory seeker. Unlike his brother, all Draven cares about our fame and glory. But he has never been as successful as Darius. When Draven was traveling, he ran into Lulu and Tristana. He fought them, but eventually he lost and fled. Also, during Uigo conquests, Draven challenged him and immediately lost, resulting in his ruination. So Mordecai sees Draven as a pathetic glory seeker. But again, the reason of that interaction is mainly because Draven is Noxian. Flimsy blades and fancy footwork won't save you, Katarina. The reason of that interaction is the same, again. Katarina is Noxian. Katarina is an assassin who is known for her swiftness when she is killing her targets. So Mordekaiser basically tells her that fighting him will cost her more than a scar on the eye, as Mordekaiser isn't afraid of her swiftness. Ah, the Black Rose. I remember your petty manipulations. After Mordekaiser was killed and came back to life again, 
LeBlanc was one of his closest allies, at least it seemed like that, until she stabbed him in the back. He was defeated by an alliance of the Noxian tribes and the betrayal from LeBlanc. As a result, Mordekaiser was cast out of the material realm. Now, LeBlanc wants to keep Mordekaiser out of Immortal Bastion, which he built. Ah, Vagar! Such exquisite torment I gifted you! Vagar was captured, jailed and tortured by Mordekaiser. Even though he didn't want it at all, he was forced to turn his magic to darker purposes, some strengthening his master's dominion, others simply evoking terror for terror's sake. Knowing that Yordles were craftier than any of the mortal races, Mordekaiser bound Vega to the physical plane, preventing him even from escaping to Bandal City. After the betrayal of Leblanc, Vega got the chance to get free. Vladimir, you are nothing but a stain, splattered on the pages of history. Although Vladimir wants to leave it now, LeBlanc and Vladimir are the most significant members of the Black Rose, considering Mordekaiser doesn't like Black Rose at all. This interaction exists most probably because he thinks Vladimir in his long life just managed to be a stain in the history. False kings cower beneath false crowns. A true lord takes what he will. Being the first and the last Damasian in the list, Javan IV was born as a royal, but Mordekaiser worked his way through success. There is nothing much of significance here, just Mordekaiser telling Javan that he is better. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe to get the updates of the next videos. Thanks for watching.